Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha, and today I'm having Greek yogurt, frozen cherries, oats, Diet Dr. Pepper. Yes, this is obviously the third breakfast chat I filmed in a row sitting at the desk without really getting up. So it's all one big breakfast chat today, unless the bowl gets smaller. And... Um, Anyone who wants to complain or make suggestions on what I should eat, unless you're going to buy my food and ship it to me, I'm not interested. And even then, I'm still probably not interested. You need to let me pick what you buy. But, let's talk a little bit about a question I got the other day. Or at this point, it'll be the other week, other month. You know, hey, you know, delts have three different angles like like do we need to be looking at what's the most volume our delts can recover from and here's what I'm going to say that's probably the wrong question to ask it's probably the wrong question to ask and if anything if anything I think guys over obsess over the delts and and I get it I get why a lot of you guys do it because not everyone's goals are 100% strength. Okay, and I can I can respect that fact. What I hate is that word aesthetic. I hate that men should not be using that for a whole host of reasons. But when people talk about aesthetics, what do they mean? What specifically does that look they're talking about? Being very lean, very, very low body fat with round, big, wide delts. That's what they mean. Well, therefore, a lot of guys will obsess over the delt once they figure this out. But here's, the, here's kind of the point. Anything you're oftentimes doing for the delt is kind of just adding a small finishing touch. Aren't right, your delts? It worked extremely hard during all your basic, basic training. Okay. And I'm not saying I fully agree with this, but I've seen experts, even bodybuilding experts, say that realistically, you need to worry about the side delt. In other words, they're like all your chest pressing and your rowing, if you do enough of it, will build the whole delt. There is a degree of truth to that, but I'm not saying it's going to always maximize all of it. But they are right. Your, even your side delt will get bigger when your volumes go up on those. You start exceeding 10 quality sets a week of chest pressing and rowing, your side delts will grow. Right? But here's the real problem we're, we're running into with a lot of this. People need to be looking at, asking how much can I recover from? Well, you need to be careful because yeah, delts can have a high volume tolerance, but you also need to be asking of Am I pushing it too much, and is it going to interfere with my lifting in general? In other words, you're trying to do a bunch of side delt work, and it's fatiguing the front delts. It's going to affect all your pressing. It's something to think about. Something to think about, something you have to look at individually. right? But... It, it's, it is something that has to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. But you also got to look at what's my total recovery look like. And what I'm going to generally recommend is that you don't exceed 10 sets a week that hit the side delt. For most people. Now people might say, well, Jason, I've seen you exceed that before. That's why we come back for most people. And the reason I'm going to say that, what's our general optimal volume range? What's our general volume range? 10 to 20 quality sets a week. Usually a good benchmark for your optimal hypertrophy range, keeping in mind many people cannot handle 20 sets. And we need some context there. And that 20 sets is assuming that's spread over more than one workout. And we're going that high. 
doesn't mean you come in and do 20 sets, say, for your pecs in one workout. That's stupid for most people. If you're drug-free, that's not a good idea. Just leave it at that. You're going to gain less muscle from it. Not says me, says the research. Says the best experts on top of that. Okay. So, what's going on here? Why, why 10 for the side belts? Because of the splash over. We come back over to that possibility of that. Because most of you are going to be doing at least five or six sets of chest presses a week. right? Of some type. I'm over here doing like 20. You see where we're going with that? That's a lot of splash over. Because we start doing the math, it's like, mm, there's some side delt stimulation there. So if we're already getting the 10 sets, we're getting that. Getting some carryover. Mainly what I'm worried about is, are you overtraining the front delts with all the side delt work? That's what you need to be thinking of because if that happens. A lot of side delt exercises that people do hit the front delts just as hard. In some cases, harder. You look at some, and I'm not saying EMGs are the be-all, end-all, because they aren't. But on a lot of EMG studies, a lot of side delt exercises, kind of they actually hit a higher EMG number on the front delt. And four people say, you mean the overhead press? Well, the overhead press is all of them do. That is not even questionable. No, I'm talking about upright rows. I'm talking about laterals. Yeah, all these things. So something you have to think about. You know, we run into the same thing with the rear delts. A lot of people say, well, the rear delts usually lagging. Rear delts are lagging because people don't row. You know, it's like for me, people see my back and they're just like, you just, your back is ridiculous. How many lat pull downs do you do for that? None. I've done years and years and years of real heavy rowing. I don't have a problem with doing up to 20 sets of rows a week. I have a problem prescribing it. So rear delts are not necessarily lagging if you were training your mid and upper back correctly to begin with. But I digress over to the point. All rear delt exercises hit the side delts pretty hard. But we also come back at that point of if rear delts tend to be lagging and you really want the side delts to come up, you might want to consider more rear delt exercises. In other words, if you're one of those guys you didn't row enough and you want your delts to come up, why don't you work on your rear delts more? Is everything that hits the rear delts hits the side delts a primary mover? Case in point, again, you look at the data. Banded face pulls hit the side delts super hard, but people think of them as a rear delt exercise. How about rear delt flies with dumbbells, where you've been overdoing them with dumbbells? Multiple studies have found that they hit the side delts just about as hard as a, as a normal lateral does, like a lateral race. But they hit the rear delt harder. So here's what I might recommend to guys who really are worried about that and they don't want just a big, all-encompassing thing. Like, I, I like things like snatch grip, high poles. I like upright rows for just building your whole shoulder up. But if you needed to specialize with something smaller, because, again, the situation with the front delt... And the fact that rear delts are probably lagging for you too if you're one of those people, maybe doing just more rear delt work. More rowing and more rear delt work would be the way to go for you. And we still come back to that, I think, 10 sets. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.